Ask the NFL. They've got all the answers. We really don't. Is the NFL after Raiders owner Mark Davis? This is something that we have talked about for a long time on this channel. In October in 2021, after the forced resignation of John Gruden, there were reports, even by CBS Sports, Jason LaConfora, that people around Mark Davis believe the NFL is out to get him. And now we are seeing this recent story, this recent allegation by former president Dan Ventrell, where he alleges that Mark Davis created a hostile work environment for female employees. Employees. This is this is basically what he's saying, and we don't know what's really behind this. But it is really interesting when you think about the fact that the NFL had a tense relationship with Mark Davis last year. After Mark Davis was forced to get rid of John Gruden, he was asked by reporters about this forced resignation, and all he had to say was, "Ask the NFL; they have all the answers." Jason Cole of Bleacher Report actually was the one who tweeted about uh, sources close to Mark Davis potentially thinking that the NFL is targeting him after the Gruden hit job situation; that they're also going to be targeting Davis as well because he put up a fight. He arguably was not amenable to the idea of firing John Gurdon and had to have his hand sort of forced. Right. So that was a there's a Sports Illustrated article last year during that time about the NFL potentially needing to step in to stabilize the Raiders. That's their wording. I think we remarked at the time that it was sort of euphemistic language that sounds like it's it's more like trying to change the leadership of the Raiders, potentially take it away from the Davis family and give it to someone else who could be controlled more easily or whatever. There are various theories. But the actual article itself lists Damon Arnett, Henry Ruggs III and some players who've been in legal trouble to say the least, obviously, in the rug situation, as evidence of Raiders dysfunction, which is interesting because there's a graphic that you've showed in the past, there it is, about other players on other teams having a much higher rate of criminal activity or charges or legal problems than the Raiders. It was a curious article. It was a uh, very shaky. The timing was right after the Gruden hit job situation. So I think a lot of us were wondering, is the NFL out to get Mark Davis as well after the Gruden situation? Are they going to be changing the leadership? ultimately. We know for a fact that Mark Davis was reluctant to fire Gruden even after the Demore Smith emails were leaked. And we actually know Friday, October 8th, that Mark Davis was given the emails that were eventually leaked on a Monday, which had language about women in the LGBTQ community. But Mark Davis never wanted to fire Gruden, no matter what his record was. And he had actually been trying to recruit John Gruden to be the head coach of this team since 2012. So he'd wanted him for a long time and finally got his guy in 2018. And he wasn't going to let him go easily. And according According to Mark Davis, the Raiders first heard about the Demore Smith emails by a reporter from the Washington Post on October 7th. So the NFL barely communicated to them about the emails on October 8th. And one of Mark Davis's biggest complaints was the fact that the NFL and a coalition of owners knew about these emails with John Gruden in July before the season started and they held on to them and they did not make Mark Davis aware of them until October that same year. Right. It sounds like the emails involved involving Demore Smith, at least one sentence of them, half a sentence, a fragment of a sentence was leaked to the New York Times and the Washington Post the same day that Demore Smith was up for re-election as the president of the NFLPA, the Players Association. John Gruden's email was over 10 years old. It was actually dated back to 2011 during the NFL lockout. So it was probably criticizing Demore Smith about the lockout. That was all kept out. And then some kind of like childish joke about Demore Smith was leaked on the same day. Demore Smith was facing an embattled re-election effort campaign. Rather, people like Richard Sherman were very vocally aggressive about Demore Smith in opposition to him in his re-election. That's what's so ridiculous about it. Nobody calls him out. Nobody calls out the hypocrisy. And I'm, I'm hoping that one day, you know, people will be brave enough to call out the hypocrisy of saying, hey, we really care about player safety, but hey, we also want you to play an extra game, put your body on the line and risk, risk your career. Very narrowly re-elected on the same day that these emails were leaked, arguably you know, potentially as a result of the leak of these emails. So kind of a hitting two birds with one stone situation where you take out John Gruden uh, and then you also get Demore Smith reelected. After that weekend, the 11th, Monday, October 11th, more emails were essentially released or fragments of an email. We never got to see any email. So this is just reporters saying that they saw an email saying X, Y, Z, but none of us have ever actually been able to see one email. On October 11th, finally, Davis's hand was forced and he let go of John Gruden. Davis was obviously 
very upset, clearly. Say something like, ask the NFL, they have all the answers, is essentially saying they're behind all of this. They know everything. This was a hit job. So the fact that he eventually changes his tune and not long after the situation, he changes his tune and seems to make a pull a 180 with respect to how he talks about Goodell and the NFL, um, you know, less than a month later. So that seems to mean that he was initially uh, maybe a little more honest, a little more frank, candid about how he actually felt about this. And then he had to eventually keep his mouth shut as he got the Super Bowl was announced to be in Vegas and you wouldn't want to ne necessarily harm your bottom line. So you kind of have to play along. It's an open question right now whether Davis was actually able to convince any of these people that he would play along or whether there's been a target on his head ever since. So around that time, the rumors about Mark Davis potentially pursuing legal action against the NFL quieted down and it would seem like the press conference with Mark Davis and Roger Goodell together, the fact that the Raiders are hosting the Super Bowl, meant that they had come to some sort of agreement and that Davis was no longer interested in pursuing legal action and that the NFL was also no longer interested in being out for Mark Davis like he initially thought. So now fast forward to today where Dan Ventrell has made these allegations against Mark Davis after serving for 18 years with the Raiders organization, he is alleging that Mark Davis created a hostile workplace for female employees with the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders. Ventrell claims that he reached out to the NFL after Mark Davis failed to take these complaints by these employees seriously, and then he was fired after reaching out to the NFL. Yeah, it's an open question whether Dan Ventrell is simply a disgruntled employee who's very upset about being let go, so potentially abruptly, and is looking for some kind of uh, retribution. He's actually claiming or accusing Mark Davis of retaliation, of wrongful termination. Mark Davis has not commented on these allegations. But what he did comment on was Dan Ventrell. He says, the only thing I want to make clear is that Dan Ventrell was never president. And he basically goes on to say that he was only ever interim president. However, Dan Ventrell has worked for the Raiders for 18 years. He started in 2003 and rose the ranks, eventually becoming executive vice president and general counsel. So Davis didn't actually respond to the allegations. He just claimed that Dan Ventrell was the interim, never the actual president, which really, you know, as much as I want to defend Mark Davis here, it's not, it doesn't actually go to the allegations, doesn't go to the issue of the allegations or the heart of the matter at all, because his actual standing, Ventrell's actual standing within the organization, even if he wasn't officially the president, he'd been with the organization for over 18 years. He's a higher up executive to say the least. So he still has standing to essentially make these sorts of allegations against Mark Davis. But of course, ultimately, if there is nothing to these allegations. If that comes out in court, then this would be a huge blow to Dan Ventrell's case. Uh, it would make him virtually unemployable for the rest of his life. So the question is, why would he be taking such a risk, potentially, unless potentially these allegations have some merit to them? If workplace misconduct has such a, a liberal sort of idea, uh, there's a lot of different activity can be absorbed within this term, then it's possible that there is something to these allegations. Again, we need more information about it, but it's possible there is something to these allegations and that it is still potentially a cover for ousting Mark Davis. Ultimately yeah, and it's actually NFL. very odd that uh, Ventrell would make these claims because he would not be employable in the future by other owners. And he's young for this type of position. He is only in his 40s. So when you look at Ventrell, he has kind of a long career ahead of him, potentially, even if he was fired by Mark Davis for purely performance issues. But it's difficult to justify the fact that he is fired for performance issues when in fact he had been employed by the Raiders for over 18 years. Suspicious that someone who is relatively young for this position would stake everything on this sort of nebulous term workplace misconduct. Like if there was actual sexual assault involved, you'd think that he would use those far more charged words which is far more serious and grave sounding. So it's it's unclear why he's doing this or what sort of grudge he has. Was he just upset about being wrongfully terminated and, you know, according to him, wrongfully? But like you said, he could be potentially employed by another team. And if they see that he's bringing this sort of trouble for his previous employer, arguably that would make him less employable. So what is he getting out of this? And what is his angle? Given the last several years of watching instances of corporate blackmail and people being removed from leadership positions over various sex scandals or race or whatever, I guess I'm a little more cynical uh, where I think that he's probably not purely motivated by his 
passionate adherence to feminism and that potentially this is, you know, something that he does have ulterior motives with respect to Mark Davis's tenure as the Raiders owner. It's a little odd that the allegations have come today. You would think if Mark Davis has this hostile environment that he creates for female employees, something would have been reported. A complaint would have been sent to Dan Ventrell in his 18 years that he's been serving with the Las Vegas Raiders. And also, why would these complaints be sent to Dan Ventrell? Don't the Raiders have an HR department? Depending on the level of employment of these women, why would it go directly to the vice president or the interim president? That that really just doesn't add up to me. Totally. Yeah. Any misconduct allegations at any uh, company would obviously go immediately to the human resources department. So uh, why are they why aren't they not involved? Uh, why does this go all the way to the top? A lot of the details here are just not making any sense, quite frankly. I don't want to necessarily jump to conclusions. We don't know exactly what's going on, but this does evince a broader NFL targeting of Mark Davis. It is noteworthy that, you know, it's happening less than a year after John Gruden was ousted. And if the NFL wanted to get rid of Mark Davis, they couldn't immediately do it after the John Gruden hit job. They couldn't. It would look bad and be bad optics. But they are brave enough, if this is true, if they are trying to force Mark Davis out, they are being quite brazen and doing it in less than a year later. And what the NFL is counting on, if Mark Davis is ousted as owner, if they are able to remove him, if this goes even further than it is right now, the NFL is counting on fans to forget about it, to forget about the Gruden hit job, and to just move on. Maybe have the Raiders be very successful this year so the fans don't care anyway who the owner is. Well, it's a younger fan base. It's a lot less fans who have any connection to the history of the Raiders, Al Davis, the AFL versus the NFL, etc., etc. So it'd be a lot easier to move past a scandal like this relatively quickly if we just win, baby, right? (laughs) One of the biggest issues that fans had with the John Gruden hit job, whatever you want to call it, was that it happened in the middle of the season and then it seemed to compromise seemed to it obviously compromised the season last year was not fair what how you shake it doesn't matter how you shake it including our division generally other teams were obviously affected by what happened there but the John Gruden hit job coincided with Demoree Smith's re-election bid October 8th of 2021 so it had to happen apparently into the season to coincide with that re-election but many people were asking why didn't they take care of this back during the summer when those emails were collected and assessed, when they had access to the original emails. So potentially if something is happening, if there's some broader targeting of Mark Davis here, they are potentially handling it fairly early on in the off season, well before the upcoming season. So that's a perk for us. At least if something happens, it'll be done in the summer rather than in the fall. Right, early summer. It's early May, so. We generally hope this blows over and we really hope it's a nothing burger, but we just want to make it clear if this does happen, if he is ousted as owner if this does go further just know you saw this video and just know that we saw this coming a mile away back in october with the john gruden ousting and raider nation in general saw it so hopefully raider nation doesn't have historical amnesia and they're able to follow the lines and read between the lines and know exactly what's going on here right and you had jason cole you had uh law confora last year write articles or tweet about the fact that mark davis sources close to mark davis which is essentially a proxy for mark davis himself claiming that the NFL was potentially targeting him or it looked like they were. So yeah, let's not forget that. People, you know, in CBS and NBC commented on the NFL potentially targeting Mark Davis. This wasn't just a group of, you know, amateur YouTubers out there. You know, these are these are uh, credentialed reporters who commented on this and potentially Mark Davis himself, although it would be a difficult situation for him if he actually went on the record and committed to that. Either way, make sure you like this video if you watch it all the way through. Subscribe to get more updates on the Raiders and also share this video with your friends if you want them to see the sort of points and things that we're talking about in this video share this video with your friends let them know where you heard it from my name is Wi-Fi Willie of the Raiders Rundown I'm Hotspot Audrey peace out and we hope you have a good one